Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking our first look at Theros Beyond Death Standard and I was invited to participate in the Early Access event. So this video is sponsored by Wizards of the Coast and we played a lot of different decks but one of the decks that stood out the most was this Mono Blue Ramp Devotion deck using Nyx Lotus to ramp and uh, generate a ton of extra mana. So I'm just going to show you the footage of how we built the deck and how the games played out. Hope you enjoy. So Nyx Lotus, 4 mana artifact and are stabbed. Tap it, choose a color, and then makes mana equal to your devotion to that color. So it's a powerful ramp card, but of course it is kind of slow. So how would we build this? Monitor helps us untap Lotus, which can make a lot of mana. And it's also an early blocker. We can play more agents, and then Gadwick. And I guess Arcanus Owl gets a bit better since it can find the Lotus and the Monitor. So I probably still want a couple. Do we need for Thassa in this build? Maybe not. So I'm not sure on the split between Owl and Thassa. Maybe Owl's not needed, but it does add a lot of devotion. And Thassa's still nice with some of these other cards. Owl definitely gets better if it's a 4 off, because then it can find other copies of itself. If we just play two Owls and then four Monitor for Lotus, that's probably not enough. But if we played four, then it could be fine with 12 targets. We might need some more early Devotion. But there's definitely something powerful going on here. The ramp that Lotus provides, especially with Cure untapping it and Monitor untapping it, can give us some very explosive turns where we get to Agent or Gadwick for a million. And then I guess this deck might use Sailor as a mana sink if we make a lot of mana. So I could see Sailor being okay here. Yeah, I could always play Brazen Borrower as well for some interactions, probably fine. Mass Manipulation could also be a good finisher once we make a ton of mana. Although Agent plus Thassa already kind of steals all the opponent stuff. Thassa is maybe a little bit worse, but it's still good with Agent. It can still flicker like an oracle to maybe help us uh, find the cards we need. And it also triggers Kiora since it's still a 6 powered creature. Or how does this work? I guess if it's not a creature it doesn't trigger Kiora, right? It only triggers Kiora if we have enough devotion, because otherwise it doesn't enter as a creature. So we do need 5 devotion to draw a card. Turn 2 oracle, turn 3 Kiora, turn 4 Thassa. Only has 4 Devotion, so then Thassa doesn't draw a card. But I guess we can go turn 3 Kiora, turn 4 Cavalier, and then Thassa draws a card. Isn't 4 Lotus too much? I guess it is Legendary. I forgot that part. So maybe just play 3 and then fewer Agents maybe. And then play the, the Owl as well, which can find Lotus. Yeah, we could play the Counter Spells as well, but of course the more interaction we have, the weaker our Devotion synergies become. For Gandwick might be too many, but we're probably happy playing this on turn 3 some amount of the time. And it can tap stuff down, which is useful, alongside the Brazen Borrower especially. Having the play of turn 3 Cura, turn 4 Cavalier is pretty nice. Yeah, that is true, the 4 mana enchantments featuring Ashok that can counter something essentially. Has a bit of synergy with Devotion. Ashok's a Razor, but it's pretty clunky at 4 mana. Could also be a 25 land deck, to be honest, since kind of want to hit our land drops, so we'll try two monitors, maybe. It's a bit low on cheap plays now, but I guess Borrower's kind of a two-drop, too. All right, we'll try this. This hand's extremely slow, so I don't know if we can keep this, but it does have most of the cards we want. Yeah. If we get steamrolled, we'll get steamrolled, I guess. Hopefully draw something before turn 4. Didn't quite pan out. So 
So now what? I can play Lotus and then next turn, if I draw a 3-drop, I can go Cavalier plus play a 3-drop. Or I can play Thassa now and then next turn I get to Brainstorm twice, maybe. Yeah, I'll play Lotus. Yeah, this hand didn't quite pan out. If we found something to play early, then we could have been fine, but... Yeah, just too many expensive cards. I mean, we can still brainstorm into something cheap here. Kyoros kind of nice. So now I could play Kyora. So this is kind of where our deck starts popping off. So now we have 7 mana, if we had an Agent of Treachery we could have played it. But how about just playing a Thassa? Draw cards. Gadwick looks good. I could have also flickered Lotus or flickered Monitor to untap Lotus and then use Thassa's ability to tap down creatures. So what are we doing now? Probably start with Owl, which is basically free with Lotus in play. No! White time the Lotus. Ah, oh, that's sad. So some tap Lotus. The ocean surges, life and then maybe keep up two extra mana. Like, we can flicker the monitor to untap Lotus to tap down their creatures with Thassa, so I'm not too concerned about needing enough blockers back. But I guess X equals 7 is enough. And then I can either Petty Theft or Oracle. They're pretty far from Grey Merchant mana, so I'm not too concerned. And then we'll put an agent on top. And this can even attack. Yeah, monitor seems kind of nice with the lotus here. I have to discard a bunch. Can Paddy theft at instant speed, which also taps stuff down with Cadwick. Alright, well, <laughs> our first play was a Lotus on turn 4, but it seemed kind of insane once we got to untap with it, with Kiora and Monitor. Of course my opponent was stuck on 3 lands, so didn't really get to deploy their entire hand in time. But as a proof of concept, there's definitely something here, so how do we improve this? I mean, the key that game kind of seemed to be the combination of Kiora and Monitor. Untapping the Lotus, Cavalier also seemed excellent, giving us kind of this way to filter our hands, get rid of extra Lotus that we don't need. Of course, great with Thassa as well. I think I indeed want more Monitors. Just seems very good. And I might just want to max out on Lotus anyway. And then we can just get rid of extra copies with Cavalier. And 
and then maybe go down to three thousands. Four Gadwick might be a bit much. Could try three, because the owl also helps us find Thassa, so three Thassas with four owls is probably okay. And then we also have the oracle to find the pieces. Yeah, maybe I can cut a land since we were playing 25. Slightly adjusted numbers here. More monitors, one fewer Thassa, one more Lotus, one fewer Gadwick, one fewer land. So I really need some lands here. Don't want to bounce the omen. Yeah, the fact that Kira can untap Lotus right away is pretty nuts. Because the big drawback is that it comes into play tapped. Perfect. So, I mean, right now Lotus doesn't make a ton of mana. So I might be better off just playing Cavalier right now, and then next turn I can play Lotus and untap it to use for mana right away. Yeah, Kyura seems amazing with Cavalier. Kind of have everything we need here. So as long as Kira survives, we're in great shape. I guess Cavalier also kind of wants to survive. First sighting of Perforos. Can easily bounce it with our Brazen Borwer to prevent any Dracoseths from being uh, cheated into play. And then we have 5 mana. So probably just want to Brazen Borwer play Brazen Borwer. And then next turn, we can maybe play Thassa or another Cavalier. I guess we can Cavalier first, and that can maybe also find me like an Agent of Treachery, which would be pretty good. Don't need more Lotus. Could draw a lot of cards with the Gadwick here too. To make a splash. 90 mana, not bad. So how about we bounce Perforos? And then I do want to play Thassa. And then 30 mana, so X equals 10 for Gadwick. Sure.
And we get to flick our Cavalier too. So yeah, this Lotus card seems pretty strong. I guess this is a good way to win with Thassa's Oracle if we just draw our entire deck. Alright. Well, that was kind of ridiculous. Kiora into Lotus. Just sets up these uh, insane starts. Alright, so time for Cavalier. Let's get moving. Can we find a Lotus? We sure can. I guess I can get rid of one Cavalier and a land, maybe. Also, I kind of want to draw the land. So we can go Lotus, which taps for four, so it's kind of free to play it. And then play Cavalier afterwards. The ocean surges, life thrives. Could also play Thassa on tap, Cavalier. No, I, I think I just want more bodies in play. I mean, Lotus alongside Kiora seems pretty insane, so it's probably at its best in blue devotion compared to other devotions. So, this we can play for free. I mean, when you've got this much mana, you can play this before using the Lotus again. Misses, sure. Is it agent time? Could also Cavalier, I mean, we've got a million mana here. So I can put an Owl back and then find it with the other Owl. Never mind. I forgot that was in our deck. 
How about a nice corridor monitor? I mean, we can easily win the game this turn just with Gadwick and Thassa's Oracle, which is kind of insane. So, 41 cards remaining. How much mana is this? 43, so I can draw 40. So what if I just draw... like, minus 2 enough to play another monitor? So what if I draw... Uh, let's see, 43... 40, 38... Pretty much guarantees that I draw another monitor. And then we can use that monitor to untap the Lotus and then play Thassa's Oracle to win the game. Alright, where's the monitor? I saw it here somewhere. Bam! Wow. This was kind of insane. What turn was that? We went turn 3, Kiora. Turn 4, we played Cavalier. Turn 5, we went Lotus plus Cavalier, I think. And then turn 6, we won. Is that what happened? So do we want to make any changes to the deck? Feels pretty solid. But of course having opening hands with Kiora is pretty key. But we also have the monitor, so we have two ways of potentially untapping the Lotus. Which is what makes this deck so strong. Because card draw combined with untapping effects for Lotus basically means all the mana in the world, which you can use to draw more cards, to untap Lotus more. And once you draw your entire deck, you just randomly have this 2-drop that's already good in the deck, that also wins the game. So all the pieces fit together perfectly. Like, it's possible that you don't even need Agent at the top end, and the deck is so consistent that it can win with infinite mana and then Gadwick plus Oracle, and we just max out on Gadwicks. But there are matchups where you don't get to assemble that much mana and you might just want to have the interaction that Agent provides. So it's probably pretty reasonable like this and pretty happy with the Fabled Passage to go with Cavalier to shuffle the deck after brainstorming. So yeah, definitely potentially a contender in the new standard, so looking forward to it. Alright, so that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.